Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and this is a special bonus episode featuring Ryan Burkett from People for Bikes. And we are talking about a new incentive program to help employers encourage their employees to ride bikes more often. And that program is run through the Ride Spot software. Uh, bike Perks is what they are calling it. And uh, Ryan's gonna give us a little bit more information about that. So let's jump right into it. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited uh, to talk through all things bikes today. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I'd love to have my guests just kind of give a quick introduction. So uh, who is Ryan? Yeah. So my name is Ryan Burkett, and I am the director of Enterprise Partnerships at People for Bikes, uh, which is a fancy way to say that I'm responsible for engaging employers in uh, their journey to becoming uh, more bike friendly businesses. Fantastic. That's great. And uh, what did you do before? So before People for Bikes, I was working for um, a bike manufacturer called Pacific Cycle. Uh, it's the holding company of Schwinn and Mongoose bike brands out of Madison, okay. Wisconsin. Okay, great. And where are you based out of? I actually live um, in north northwest Illinois, okay. a small town called Galena. But um, People for Bikes staff is ma majority is in Colorado, front range of Colorado, and then about a, a third of us are spread across the country um, and work remotely. And, and I'm one of those remote workers. Fantastic, that's great. Yeah. So, so why bikes? I mean, why are you so passionate about uh, working in this industry? Yeah, that's a that's a great question because it actually parlays really well into my role at People for Bikes. So I, about 10 years ago, I, I got a job in the bike industry working for a bike rack manufacturer. And at that time we were incentivized to commute to work using our bicycle to like kind of practice what we preach. So it was a little bit of like a, a commuter incentive program that was encouraging um, the staff to participate in the bike industry by riding their bikes more often. So I took my employer up on that offer and started riding my bike as a form of transportation to work. And it really ended up being kind of a transformative experience in my life where I felt like those trips, that commute was, I was like taking myself out of traffic and the frustrating uh, perils of trying to drive your bike or, or drive your car to, to work. And I was able to actually just like enjoy nature and, and see unique things uh, from the seat of my bicycle. And it, it felt, it was really an opportunity for me to experience life in a different way. And that passion to use the bike as a form of transportation carried into my, my second job in the bike industry, which was that working for Pacific Cycle. So um, at Pacific Cycle, I joined our bike committee at work, which was mm -hmm. tasked with a similar role, which was engaging the rest of our staff to, to ride their bike as a form of transportation and or for exercise. Uh, so I found a lot of passion in that volunteer role. And mm -hmm. while I was at People for Bikes, or excuse me, at Pacific Cycle, I was also the liaison between Pacific Cycle and People for Bikes. So I heard of this new role coming come in live at People for Bikes that would be basically responsible for helping corporations across America um, develop a similar programming for for their staff. And I was I kind of jumped at the opportunity because it just made a lot of sense for for my life um, and my passions. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's good stuff. Uh, for for folks that uh, may not be super aware of who People for Bikes is, can you just give like a really quick thirty thousand foot level of of who yep. the organization is? Yeah, People for Bikes is the nation's largest bicycle advocacy organization, and we also act as the bike industry's trade association. So about half of our business is really focused on helping grow the bike industry and uh, that work is funded by bike industry members so bike brands bike parts everything else uh, they pay a, a membership due to help um, advance our work and then we also uh, the other half of our business is really focused on the individual rider and bike advocates from across the country to help provide a safer and more fun experience of them riding in their region yeah, fantastic. And this is the landing page for uh, the organization as a whole. And uh, yeah, at the top there, you can see uh, corporate members. That's where you can sort of log in and and, and pop into there. Uh, yeah, that's a great overview of the organization. I like to think of it as kind of the 
the the arm, yes, the lobbying arm of the manufacturers and 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 the folks that are quote unquote uh, getting the stuff built and sold and all that, and then the other side of it is is really encouraging people to ride, you know, getting more people riding bikes more often, and then also assisting with you know the environment helping you know make the environment more conducive to uh to riding being able to 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 make it safer out there so lots of uh, advocacy work uh from you know from the uh, innovation side you take a look at the, the different campaigns and and all of that so for your group uh what what part of the organization are you within are you in like the the local innovations or or where do where do you kind of fit in the hierarchy Yep. So the the way that makes the most sense for my brain to delineate our work is we kind of have three major verticals. We have our policy work, uh, right. we have our infrastructure work, and then we have our participation work. So those three verticals tend to interact with one another, but um, they really are coalescing to that same mission of getting more people riding more often. Within the three pillars, my specific programming falls under participation because it's a, a program that you know encourages more people to ride more often. So that that's the that's the vertical I work within. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. And when I heard about this program, I thought immediately of. TDM, you know, transportation demand management programs. And, and it sounds like you, you got a taste of that, you know, within your own uh, companies that you were working for of like the incentive that an employer might have to, to be able to encourage their employees to not drive into work. And there's, you can possibly cover, uh, you know, some of those reasons as well. But yeah, this is the uh, article that was uh, published just this last month in January about the program that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but more globally talk about a little more in depth as to why uh, it is advantageous for corporations to encourage their employees uh, to be able to want to walk, bike and, uh, or take transit, you know, anything other than driving, in a single occupancy vehicle to their place of work? This this answer kind of varies by business, but I would say sure. generically, a lot of uh, organizations that are based in densely populated areas tend to, the, the primary driver of this type of program is reducing parking dependency. So right. a lot of uh, like urban, in urban centers, a lot of businesses are are leasing or paying for their parking spaces. So they tend to run these commuter incentive programs to reduce parking dependency so that they are freeing up money in that capacity. But we've also done a lot of um, qualitative research in the past year while we were kind of piloting this program at People for Bikes, where we reached out to our um, newsletter subscribers and kind of asked them like, so this is the individual, this is the individual that's actually riding. We asked them like, what motivates you to ride? And what we found is it's drastically different than what the business owner or the business itself is is seeing as the benefit of the program. So you kind of have a little bit of this juxtaposition of trying to educate the employer on here's the reasons that would benefit your business to offer this type of programming. And then having them then present the program to their staff in a way that presents the benefits for the staff members themselves. Uh, because a lot of times the individual riders, they want to ride for health and wellness benefits, and that could be mental or physical health. And then the the actual business wants to provide the program to either reduce parking dependency or the, a, a lot of times it's uh, sustainability initiatives trying to work towards a net zero carbon emissions as an organization, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the program, uh, that we've been alluding to, uh, is, is this one here. So the, the bike perks program, uh, last year, you guys de- debuted that program within the people for bikes organization to, like you said, sort of kick the tires on it and get a sense of it. And, and I get the sense that there's also a, a technology, uh, angle to this. So why don't you go ahead and describe it more in detail? Yeah. So one of the one of the major pieces of offering a an incentive program or an, a, a program that encourages people to do any type of activity is you need a way to track participation. Um, and People for Bikes luckily has a, a ride recording and sharing platform already in place. It's called RideSpot. 
So we took RideSpot as as the tool we were going to use to track participation. And, and the nice thing about it is it allowed me to, as the program administrator myself, I could see participation happening live. So if you went for a ride this morning, I could see that this afternoon, and I could comment on that ride to show you some encouragement and just kind of validate that that experience. So RideSpot is the tool that we ended up using to run our program, and it's also the free software that we offer for organizations who want to, to want to implement a similar program at their uh, location. Great. And we'll, we'll pop on over to the RideSpot uh, link in just a moment, but I wanted to linger on some of the details of this uh, uh, little uh, uh, debut or kicking of the tires uh, pilot program. And that was that uh, there, it was, you know, people for bike staff are earned $4 for each uh, ride logged and they could earn up to $2,400 per year. And then we look at some of the data that we were able to see. We saw 92.7% of the staff participated, uh, you know, well over 7,000 uh, bike trips uh, total recorded uh, and, you know, pushing 32,000 miles uh, ridden. Uh, well, uh, okay. It is people for bikes. So, you know, it, that, that makes sense. Uh, and uh, w- were you surprised though by by these, this data that, you know, the set that came in and uh, I, I, obviously it must've been encouraging, but, but was it a, su- a surprise to you? Absolutely. So I ended up, I, I was really responsible for setting a budget at the beginning of the year for, for our programming. And I had set that budget with a, an aggressive assumption that we'd have about 25% uh, participation was my, was my guess, you know, um, nationally, when you offer a, a bike encouragement program, I believe Bikes Make Life Better was the organization who's where I pulled this data from, but they they said that about two to 5% of individuals will ride their bike as, to work as a form of transportation without an incentive. And then if you add an incentive, you can try and push that number up to close to 10% is like the, um, the gold standard. So, Assuming that we are people for bikes and we're going to far exceed this gold standard of 10%, I, I made the uh, aggressive assumption, in my opinion, that we'd be around 25, 25%. So, right. that, you know, qu- quite a bit higher than the national average. And we ended up landing, I think it was, it might have been in that article, but I want to say it was closer to like 43% um, percent as like a particip- participated across the year. Yeah, we had ninety seven percent participate in the program, like so they have at least logged one ride during the course of the year. But right, right, forty three, right. like forty three ish percent were regularly logging rides. So we ended up blowing the budget out of uh, out. So I had to reset the budget for twenty twenty three. But it did it did surprise me, and we learned a lot about you know what incentivizes folks how to remove barriers effectively. There's a lot of barriers involved with this type of programming and learning how to remove those barriers to increase participation is like, that's the secret sauce. And and we really learned a lot in 2022 that we're now being able to hand over for free to organizations in 2023 to get their staff writing as well. Yeah. And just to be clear, uh, I speak a lot here on the Active Towns uh, podcast and, and the work that I do with the Active Towns Initiative about that balance between uh, the infrastructure, the the environment that we build out in our communities and making sure that we're building all ages and abilities facilities. And, uh, you know, for for many years, we, we, we've we talked about, hey, we just need to build this infrastructure out. We need to be able to get it, you know, is that that build it and they will come uh, concept. But at the same time, when we're talking about true cultural change, that you have to have both, you have to have the hardware, you know, the, the, the built environment and the infrastructure, the network, if you will, uh, out there built, but you also need to have the software. You need to have the, the policies and the programs and the incentives uh, to be able to, to help reinforce and, as I like to say, activate that hardware. And so that's what this really is. I mean, you guys are getting down to the, you know, a, a, a really fun incentive-based program to be able to encourage the activation 
of hopefully a, a very safe and inviting uh, network of facilities out there in, in the city. And so that's going to vary widely from city to city for each organization. But I just wanted to kind of put that into context that what we're talking about here is is a, a cool, fun, engaging incentive program that would be, you know, that activation of hopefully the wonderful hardware that's out there. Yeah, no, you said that really eloquently. And that's also a very similar thought process that we approach our work at People for Bikes with. So as I mentioned with the policy participation and infrastructure pillars, infrastructure is is necessary for people to feel safe and encouraged to ride in their community. So yeah. that hardware piece that you speak to is definitely something that we put a lot of resources towards to really develop connected infrastructure that people can ride uh, safely. And then uh, to your point even more, you know, then we also offer these programs to now not only showcase where that infrastructure exists, but also be able to then incentivize and encourage folks to want to ride that infrastructure on a regular basis. Fantastic. So in the article, um, there, there's a hyperlink to this page. So this is the enterprise.ridespot.org uh, landing page. And so it, I'm assuming that this is the, the the landing page for folks to be able to go to, uh, to be able to learn more and, and learn about trying to engage their, uh, their organization, their community. And w- what happens when you hit the receive demo? <laughs> yep. So the receive demo puts you directly in contact with me. Um, and okay. I am able to walk uh, individuals through kind of what does this program look like if um, if your organization wanted to participate? So Oh, if- boom. Yeah. You're not kidding. Yeah. Directly in touch with your calendar. <laughs> yep. So you, can, you can book 30 minutes with me right now if you want it. Fantastic. Um, and uh, and, and uh, through that demo, I'd, I'd basically just like ask the individual, um, you know, what kind of organization do you work for and what's your goals with um, putting in a bike program? And then based on the feedback that they give, um, I kind of walk them through how the ride spot software can then help them achieve their goals of, of getting more people riding for whatever reason it is that they think necessary. Fantastic. Does it make sense for us to take a look at this uh, short video from ride spot? Yeah, absolutely. This just gives a yeah quick demo of kind of what RideSpot's able to do. I think that would be helpful too. Uh, I don't think I've done a profile on RideSpot here on the channel yet. So let's let's take a look at this. Meet Sam. Sam used to watch her friends' adventures from the sidelines until she learned about the new app, RideSpot, developed by People for Bikes. Before discovering RideSpot, finding a place to ride was a total pain in the but now it's easy. RideSpot gave Sam the confidence she needed to brush the cobwebs off her bike and start riding. RideSpot's turn-by-turn audio directions mean that Sam can keep her eyes on the road and still know which way to go. The app gives Sam tools to ride on her own or join a group ride. She can even use RideSpot to find social events or workshops put on by her local bike shop. Sam enjoyed today's group ride so much that she wants to share her positive experience. With RideSpot, it's a breeze. Sam can publish a map of her route along with details and photos from the ride. Now other riders can follow Sam's map and enjoy the same route. Download RideSpot now to discover and share great bike rides. Cool, cool. So, so clearly, it's more than just a a tracking program for an incentive. There, I, it sounds like getting under the hood. There, there's there's a lot of stuff going on with RideSpot. Yeah, RideSpot had several years of uh, development prior to bringing on the functionality to allow organizations to use it as their tracking tool for their incentive programs. So it has a ton of functionality built into it. And some of that functionality is still being uh, leveraged to accomplish our national campaigns. So almost every month we run a different philanthropic challenge to lift up and amplify the mission of uh, marginalized communities. So for example, this month in the month of February, we had the Black History Month challenge, which be, which is being run nationally through RideSpot. And as organiza- as as individuals join that that national challenge and ride in solidarity with uh, the groups we identified, we then provide a cash donation to those organizations to help uh, amplify and extend their mission. Fantastic! That's great. 
And what would you say uh, are the most frequent questions that you hear when a, an organization or group reaches out to you and and are, are maybe you know, kicking the tires and trying to figure out whether this is uh, the right program for them? I would say the question I receive the most often is, how much is it? <laughs> After I kind of uh, walk them through, especially when I'm walking them people through the demo and showing how comprehensive our programming is and how how the software works, everybody is kind of apprehensive and they're like, all right, well, let's, let's pause for a second. How much does this thing cost? And it it luckily, you know, being a nonprofit and uh, having a grant that funds um, our work on this program, we're actually able to provide it at no cost. So that's exciting news to share with uh, folks when I'm providing that demo. And then the second question um, is kind of how the incentives work. So, you know, what what type of incentive does People for Bikes offer? What type of incentive does the empl- is the employer responsible for offering? And as I mentioned, we run these national these national challenges for these philanthropic partners. So the nice thing is those those national challenges are intended to supplement your um, your very private challenges for your organization. So. People for Bikes does offer uh, actual material prizes for individuals who participate and complete those philanthropic challenges. So People for Bikes does provide some incentives for participants, but then the organization itself oftentimes adds their additional incentive package. So you had brought up that screen that kind of recap or the article that recapped our People for Bikes program. And you had mentioned that we were paying staff $4 per trip. Right. If an organization wanted to do something similar, they would be responsible for that, uh, whatever cash benefit they want to align. And and some decide to do a more holistic benefit, like a gift card for a gift card raffle for everybody for, who participates or something along those lines. Right, right. Fantastic. And I think a big part of what maybe some employers might be thinking through is, you know, well, how do I create an environment that helps to encourage our empl- my employees uh, to be able to want to to bike to work? Uh, and in the case uh, of, a, of an organization that might also be a customer facing business, it might also be and, and make it convenient for my customers to show up here by car or by not by car, you know, by, by bike as well. And in other words, becoming a bike friendly employer, but also becoming a bike friendly, uh, business. Yep. So that that's a, a little bit separate of a conversation than the, the program that I work on the league of American bicyclists. They actually have a certification of uh, bicycle friendly. Uh, it's called their bicycle friendly America program. And within that program, they have bicycle friendly business certifications and they have a, a great list of right. the different things that a business owner should do from an infrastructure standpoint to really maximize their space to encourage people to arrive by bike. So I would, I would definitely encourage people to visit League of American Bicyclists website to, to find yeah. out more about that. And I do notice that you guys do have a, a, a webinar um, from uh, this past August on transforming communities through bicycle friendly businesses. So I'll make sure to include a link uh, in our show notes uh, for this episode and in the video description down below so that po- folks can pop on over to that. And you're absolutely correct. The League of American Bi- Bicyclists have, has had a bicycle friendly businesses uh, uh incentive program or rating system or whatever they, they call it. Uh, and they do a good job of walking through some of those things. And some of them are the hardware, like, oh, by the way, do you have bike parking facilities? Uh, by the way, uh, if if a fair number of your employees are, are going to be um, cycling a, a, a great distance, you might want to consider locker rooms and a, and a shower facility uh, if, if it's environment where, you know, folks can easily ride a very, very short distance. Well, maybe maybe the shower and locker facilities aren't necessary if it's a truly welcoming environment and there's a nice network of pathways to get there because they may not be showing up you know, hot and sweaty. They may be, it may be a situation where it can be more Dutch like where you can just ride your normal work clothes uh, on your bike getting to work. So, you know, context sensitive for sure. 
That um, webinar that you just showed on the screen um, actually includes Amelia Neptune from the League of American Bicyclists and myself on the same call, uh, talking through our different programs and, and how they work um, in unison to to try and make America a better place to ride your bike. So that, that's a perfect uh, webinar to share with your, with your listeners because I, I think it does a really good job of showcasing the work of People for Bikes and the League of American Cyclists and how we're working together. Uh, to make America the best place to ride a bike. Fantastic. That's great. Well, hey, Ryan, to close this out, um, we're, we're coming up on uh, Bike Month <laughs> coming up here in the United States. Uh, what would you like to, to say to the audience about uh, this incentive program, Ride Spot and, and Bike Month, and, and how can you all help out? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. The um, May Bike Month is a really easy and natural launch point for a program that we've been discussing today. So for organizations who are interested in improving their bike culture at their workplace, uh, May Bike Month is just a really natural fit to want to get participating because a lot of times communities are running activations during May Bike Month that they encourage employers to get involved. Um, so if if this is a program that sounds like it's something that's interesting to your organization and you feel like your staff would uh, get behind you encouraging more bike ridership, um, then let's get on the phone and get talking before May Bike Month so we can get a program in place for May 1st and we can really just kind of hit, hit May Bike Month out of the park and then the program can then uh, continue throughout the rest of the year. Fantastic. And once again, uh, that landing page is uh, enterprise.ridespot.org. And that receive demo button is the button you want to smash because that'll take you right to Ryan's calendar and you can get on on his calendar to figure this out. Uh, Ryan, thank you so very much for uh, joining us here on the Active Towns podcast. It's been such a pleasure. No, thank you so much. This was a great interview and, and I really, uh, really appreciate the time to talk through the program. Hey, everyone, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. And of course, uh, download the app. Uh, click on that demo button so you can uh, learn more information from Ryan if it's appropriate for you to be able to include this uh, within your organization. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. This is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. <music>